Chincoteague Ponies. For the past month or so, they've really been in the spotlight. And for good reason as well. They're such a treasure on Delmarva. Of course, the world-famous Chincoteague Island Pony Swim took place July 27th, the 91st such event. Tens of thousands of people came out to watch the beauty swim across the Astatique Channel. And yes, it is a sight to see year after year. But then, just a couple days later, we learned of a tragic accident involving an Assateague pony. The 16-year-old stallion was hit by a car and had to be euthanized. The news broke the hearts of many people across Delmarva. And while much of the peninsula mourned the pony, we got word of a new addition to Assateague. In fact, it was a surprise addition. The birth of a new foal, this little lady joined the herd on August 1st. And with so much going on with the ponies, we thought it'd be fitting to really get to understand the lives they live and to learn more about the unfortunate loss as well as the latest edition. And to do that, we welcome Liz Davis, who is the Chief of Interpretation and Education at Astatigue Island National Seashore, as well as Anna Smolens with Purple Horse Designs and Photography. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for Thanks. having us. Yes, All right, Liz, you. let's back up just a little bit here. Now, let me ask about the, <coughs> the pony had, a, had a, only a broken leg. Why did it have to be euthanized? Well. Our, our horses are managed as wildlife, and unlike um, you know domestic horses where they may be able to be captured and kept in one place right. um, while you know bones can mend and things like that, that that can occur at Assateague. So the humane thing to do was to euthanize the horse, um, much like Instead of even through. exactly yeah. much much like if uh, a deer was hit by a, a car. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and and he was a. He was one. I saw him all the time. His name was Tunkin? Tunkin, Tell yes. us about him. Yeah, Tunkin was actually a horse that lived south of the developed area, south of the road and campground area, um, not too far from the Maryland state line. But he was one of those bands that made a seasonal migration to the developed area. So when most of the people are there, it, it was a horse that was fairly readily seen. So mm -hmm. he was a 16-year-old uh, stallion. He had three mares in his band. So, um, just looking at you, I can tell it's hard to lose one. <laughs> it's, this it is. is tough, isn't it? It is. It's very hard. It's, it, it's emotional. It's not only emotional when it's an older horse that lives a long life and, you know, passes away, but not to mention, um, such a tragic How it happened, yeah. 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 Do you so. think the other horses notice the loss? <clears throat> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, they, they look around for the missing horse, they call out for the missing horse. Really? And as time goes on, you know, they just, they'll get integrated into other bands. Things oh like my that. goodness. So, How about that? not unlike, I guess, a kind of a, a companion pet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Anna, you are passionate about <laughs> horses. You understand their uniqueness. Yeah, um, I've been horse obsessed since <laughs> I was two years old. It was nothing but horses. Um, in some form or another, whether it be riding, training, photography, um, I've been involved with them ever since. It's been a lifelong passion. Uh, I have two of my own, and, it, and it's heartbreaking that, you know, Tunkin dies at 16. I have a horse who's 23. Um, I've owned him for almost 20 years, uh, you know, and he's still got a lot of life left. Yeah. So, you know, to hear when they're cut short like that, yeah. it, it, it's mm. really sad. And, and, and you took lots of pictures of Tunkin. <laughs> tell, us, uh, tell us your take on him. Um, I came across him and his girls um, during one of my last visits. Uh, they were out by the road, and they were just peacefully grazing, you know. So I parked and I got out, and I spent about an hour and a half with them. Um, I'm pretty patient when it comes to my pictures. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm happy to, to stand around and wait for the perfect moment. Um, and. And he was just a beautiful stallion, really, really gorgeous, mm -hmm. uh, very alert, very aware of what was going on, and just a, a joy to photograph, really. And, and you saw him, saw him out with two of his? I did, I did. Um, they made their way from the road up towards the beach. Oh, I wow. was, I was, beautiful I was greatly rewarded. Oh my goodness! <laughs> as I followed them up to the beach, and he actually had three with him at yeah. the time, and one of the mares had sort of separated herself, and she was standing, sort of napping, um, on her mm -hmm. own. And I was sort of going back and forth between her and the three of them together, and I. She was sort of against the water, and I was photographing her with the water in the background, and it was evening, and the clouds were getting really nice and pretty, and, and um, I turned, because the other ones were sort of to the side of me, and I saw that massive storm cloud wow. coming, oh. and it was just amazing, Look and they just that. stood there so peaceful, so calm. 
I took that picture and I ran out of there as fast as I could because I didn't want me and my gear to get completely <laughs> soaked. This massive storm coming, um, but it was incredible to witness. Um, and it's become an award-winning photograph for me, and I well, congratulations. Will treasure it forever. Wow. Thank okay, you. Okay, well, Liz, wow. if there is a silver lining to this, you have a new addition. Tell we us do. about this little foal. We do. We have a, a new foal that was born on uh, August 1st. It's a little filly, mm. and uh, she's doing really well and very, very cute. Do they usually come by surprise? Do you know? Well, um, we usually know. Yeah. We, we test uh, for pregnancy in, in November normally, and we were expecting <coughs> three. And we had three colts, and then we had number four, <laughs> <laughs> the filly. <laughs> and uh, there is another one coming, <coughs> excuse me, to um, the mare called Charmed. Yeah. And um, she tested negative, actually, in, in, um, in November. So... Oh. She's looking very, very pregnant right now, oh, so we we'll have number five here probably oh, not, too, not too long from now. So it's really exciting for it you, isn't really it? It is really exciting, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And then, and then you have to name them. We do. We Tell us about that process. Well, you know, it is exciting, and, and, and much like I think human parents, we worry <laughs> for their safety. Mm. You know, we hope they get a chance to grow up and be wild and free and free from handouts and, right. you know, free from... You know, tragedy on the roadsides yeah. and things like yeah. that. So visitors can really help us out in that regard. But uh, the naming is done um, has the honor from our um, our wonderful friends group, Assateague Island Alliance, and they provide an opportunity for visitors to to name horses by arranging uh, raffles on their website, um, so folks can win a chance to name the horse. And uh, they've also uh, organized some auctions on eBay. So they're Ooh. great fundraisers, but wow. also people, you know, have a, a great opportunity. So, to so this foal has not been named yet? Has not been named yet, no. So, Anna, have you had a chance to see the yet-to-be-named foal? I have not. Mm -hmm. uh, my last trip was uh, postponed due to car trouble, unfortunately. But I'm planning a trip in the next couple of weeks, and I'm really looking forward to it. Babies are one of my favorite <laughs> things. <laughs> What is one thing that you think people, especially visitors to Assateague, need to know about these ponies? Well, Assateague's horses are, are special because they're wild. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, particularly on Delmarva, we have an opportunity to see horses um, out in the county and people's property and things like that sometimes. But here on a strip of sand in our backyard, we have a, a opportunity to see a herd of wild horses, and that, that's a pretty special thing. And um, these are owned by the American people, um, managed on behalf by the National Park Service. So we, we really ask that folks uh, give us a hand and, and help them stay safe and, and live long, happy, productive lives out on this barrier island. Yeah. So, Anna, you're pretty passionate about getting people to keep their distance, too. I am. You know, when I, when I go out there and take pictures, I use pretty long lenses. Right. Um, I do not need to get remotely close to them um, to take the pictures and and it breaks my heart a little bit every time I see uh, someone take a selfie with one of the ponies mm -hmm. you know um, I have been around horses my entire life I know them I know how they operate and I've still been bitten kicked trampled mm -hmm. because you just never know they are prey animals they have very fine-tuned instincts and they can react so quickly um, so even as a horse person, sometimes you can get caught unaware. Uh, and, and in the state of Maryland, for pe the people who want to touch and pet and learn, they have um, horse discovery centers that are wonderful for that. But on the island, those ponies are wild. They, it's their home, yeah. and we really need to respect that. Don't touch. Yep. Don't you can touch. look, but don't touch. Don't yep. touch. Well, Liz, Anna, thank you so yes, much. Thank you. Very good information. Yes, thank wow. you very much. And excited. Yeah.